Gonna remove the plastic stickers from this now. That'll be very satisfying because they've, they've been annoying me. That's so satisfying. It's the big one. Even the sound is satisfying. The fact that there has to be a warning is ridiculous. The ones that forgot we're, their ID10T forms. We're more intelligent. We don't need that kind of garbage. Try that cruise control at seven miles. Well, it's throttling between six and seven. I don't know why. I can't seem to make up his mind. There's some pedestrian. Oh, if you get a slope, it speeds up automatically a little bit. Oh, maybe that. Look how crispy and sharp that optic is. That's a nice little headlight. You know, I noticed too that the, the light on here is like a lavender. It's not blue, it's not green, it's not red. I've never really seen that kind of light lavender color uh, for um, a display. A display, yeah. To that point, but um, aside from that, yeah, I, I just gently let go while, while still having my hands like on it. Isn't the cruise control nice? Yeah, it is. I think that's its best feature, especially if you're on a long trail. That way, like you were saying, you can move your hands around. You don't have to hold your thumb in a weird position the whole time. Yeah. I like the way nine miles per hour feels better than six, but that's not meant as a complaint. It just, by comparing the two, cruising at nine is, feels more right than cruising at six miles per hour. Six miles per hour feels a little slow for this That's about twice speed. walking speed, six miles per hour. Nine well, is about my, three my times. average walking speed is three miles per hour. Yeah, like, so that's six is double. average stride and pace. I can go slower and faster, but... Um, so nine is, nine is three times faster than walking. Yeah. And that one can go up to... I think it just feels a little slow to me. Like if I'm just, I'm just analyzing it. Just, this is my experience. Someone else might feel differently. I just... It could definitely have I more power. Like, I just feel like, um, yeah, cruising speed, I would like, I, I, I mean, I could set it to seven or eight, I imagine, to keep, so that... You, you can set the cruise speed to anything up to 19 miles per hour. No, I'm, well, no, it was in cruising. It was cruising at 19 when I hit the brake so that you could catch up with me when I was pretending to... Yeah, you can lock the cruise at anything faster than five miles per hour all the way up to the full speed. I mean, I think if someone has a really hard time with balancing, this would be a terrible for them. Now, can you imagine going 80 miles per hour on something like that? Well, that seems meh. But it's, it's got to... I imagine the ones that go faster also have better stability than this. Yeah, they have full suspension in there the front, too. Um, and I imagine for someone who has less, like... Um, balance control I guess um and coordination if they were four at uh, like two small like not not widely uh spaced apart but two tires in front and back that would give someone with uh worse balance way better well they have rideable trikes that are kind of like that right I'm just anything that would keep this more steady if you were to have to for some reason let go I let go a little bit and I can feel how it, it wants to pull to the left or the right. Unlike the Segway where you can just raise the knee bar to steer. Yeah. You can see here the exact specification that it's the S2 Pro, has a 500 watt brushless motor, 36 volt DC battery, 11.6 amp hours, a max speed of 19 miles per hour, max load of 220 pounds. My You don't have to hold it tight, obviously, which I'm trying to prove by just having my... I mean, it is interesting that you really can feel all the different little bumps and stuff. Meg agrees that the noise, vibration, and harshness are bumpy feedback. It's not terrible. It's just it's just interesting because it really you can really feel even the little bumps of the road because of the tire design. But it's not... Well, it's not like your last one where like, it was jarring even with like, the smaller 
smaller boat. That one didn't have any suspension and the um, tires were just solid urethane. I'm trying to hold it at 7 to get it into cruise. Accessing cruise can be a little tricky because you have to hold the speed. Well, and with undulating roadways, it's making it harder. And we noticed that even with the cruise control engaged, if you go down a hill, it'll speed up past the cruise control. I feel and then like they, they could polish up the cruise control option. Um. He has the poochy lip disease. And I kept doing that. I was laughing hysterically and he just kept getting madder and madder. And uh, he was retelling this story and all of a sudden I just like the flashback of the memory came and it was hysterical. We, we were recounting memories of childhood. It was just, because he's five years younger. So I think he was five and I was 10. He said, I didn't realize this until he said it, but he said that when, I, when we were younger, I could really, I was the best person in his life at pushing his buttons. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Miss Mike. That's nice to remember happy memories with people. It's even it, funnier when the memories may have been more irritating, but now we're fun. upon looking back, it's more humorous to all parties involved. Slow down a little bit so I can get you riding behind me. A little bit more. There's, a, there's something in there. I see it. Off roading. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky doing it one handed. You're going to do it while you're riding. I am. Meg's gloating because the scooter's faster than the Segway. I topped out at 19 miles per hour. 19 miles per hour? Yeah, because I live on the edge. Bling bang, this one only goes 11.3. What is your impression of this scooter here? I don't like the thumb throttle the way it's designed because you have to kind of reach to pull down. Same with the, the brake. Um, I actually like this concept better, but that can get tiring too, so. I mean, the nice thing being the cruise control, if you set it like you were saying. I think once you get used to it, it's not so bad. Otherwise, um, it can be, it's just, it's not intuitive or, I mean, no, not intuitive, that's the wrong word. It's just not comfortable for me ha having to reach so far over with my thumb. I don't like the way it feels per se, but if you're in cruise control, you don't have to do that. You can be more relaxed. So it's got pluses and minuses. It's not perfect, but it's a lot faster than walking. And it's double fast versus the Segway, huh? Yeah. Well, slightly less, but yes. I know I've talked about this a lot in my recent videos, but if you look out here, that's not natural. Look at how much forest fire smoke is in the air. That's crazy. You can barely see to the farm across the valley there. If I go like this and zoom in, there's so much particulate in the air, it completely obscures the view. If we look ahead too, it's like there's fog. That's not fog, that's particles from forest fire smoke. And we're talking about fires that are many dozens of miles away, like 30 or 40 miles or 35 to 50 kilometers east of here in the Cascade foothills. And those fires have been raging on for more than five weeks now because it hasn't rained in six weeks. I'm not blaming climate change, but it's certainly not helping in Florida 
with the hurricane intensity. It's not helping around here with the forest fires and droughts. My senior environmental thesis was on how climate change was going to make tropical storm systems, hurricanes, and tornadoes more energetic, make droughts last longer, and make flooding more intense and longer lasting. So it makes the weather more extreme. Climate and weather, the climate change means the weather's changing. That has a tremendously negative effect on agriculture. Just saying, I've been warning people about this since 2003 and people said I was crazy. I've been publishing on my blog, PriusBlack.blogspot.com about it and people leave comments saying I didn't know what I was talking about. My cousins and relatives said I didn't know what I was talking about. But now, we're going to see the effects. Meg really likes this recently done asphalt. And just like I complimented on the I-90 trail, I wanna give King County Trail Systems an A plus job for making these really nice engineered recreational paths and trails. Today we're using them with the 2022 Highboy S2 Pro and the 2016 Segway Mini Pro that Meg is riding. And there's lots of people like that that ride bicycles. And we've encountered many pedestrians walking. And this kind of trail gets a lot of use. Now it's so smoky and sooty that there's fewer people out on this random Wednesday afternoon than we've seen before on the weekend. I can't exactly say, but I think a lot of people, given how much forest fire smoke is in the air, are listening to the advice from the professionals and health experts on the evening news that are telling people to stay inside, use an air filtering system, something with activated carbon or a HEPA filter, close the windows and doors, don't do aerobic activity outside. They're just warning people because the thing is, this smoke and soot is consisting of ultra fine particulate matter, PM or dust and soot. What that does is when you breathe it in, it sticks to your nasal bulb and it can be embedded into your lungs. And so what happens is over long periods of time, if you live in a heavily polluted area like Mexico City or near Beijing where there's coal power or in an area where there's frequent fires or biomass that's being burned crudely in inefficient ways, all that aerosolized soot and particles and particulate matter, what it does is it interferes with the lung tissue. It gets deeply embedded in the alveoli or the gas exchange sacs in the lungs where there's thin membranes that facilitate oxygen and CO2 exchange so that when you breathe in oxygen-laced nitrogen air, you breathe out CO2. Well, when particulate matter and soot and that kind of stuff gets in there, it jams and causes scar tissue. So it irritates those membranes and it jams up or claw the respiratory system. So that makes breathing dust from soil, dust from cutting ceramics or concrete, dust from forest fires, dust from smoke, household dust. Any kind of dust is generally speaking bad for human lung tissue. And it causes diseases like bronchitis, emphysema, asthma. Uh, whoa, uh, I didn't anticipate the e-brake being so intense riding one-handed, but that's my fault. See Meg here. There's Meg on the Segway. Ha ha, so it's Meg. <laughs> It's upright, but where did the rider go? Does it just balance on its own? Is it a self-balancing scooter? Would you look at that? It balances itself. To give you a scale, that's my hand. You can let them crawl on you. I love holding them. They don't bite? No, not at all. They're, they kind of tickle, and I think they're adorable. I think I spooked him. Yeah, he's, he's sitting still in case you're a predator. Oh, sorry, buddy these beautiful bright green flowers. How do they smell, Meg? Kind of like honey. Okay, honey. Sometimes I get pollen on my nose from smelling flowers. Well, who, it's happened before. Who knows about that? <laughs> that was a good pun. <laughs> So I want to talk to you about toilets and sanitation. There are some portable toilets, and they even have an extra wide one for disabled people. Public toilets like this keep people from leaving human waste along beautiful trail systems and parkways. And I think the cities and municipalities all around the world owe it to the public to install toilets like this or something similar. There's a funny. Ha ha ha. What's funny?
go. And for my friends that have never seen the inside of one of these, what, what you have in here is a toilet dispenser for toilet paper and a spare roll. That's a hand sanitizer. You see some creative artwork from the most intelligent people. Then there's a urinal here. And if we lift up the toilet seat, you can see the blue fluid, which I mentioned in one of my blog postings. That's a sanitization fluid. So the roof has vents up around the top. More artwork from the Jeopardy players that have used the facility. There's a service log here. There's a QR code if you're interested. There's the manufacturer's information in Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. Satellite Industries. Here's the service company. You can see here they have exhaust vents that allow stinky fumes to exit. They even have a water fountain with a water distribution thing for animals like dogs and cats mostly dogs so you can see here this is for children it's a little shorter the taller one for adults and this part here is for filling water bottles and miss meg is enjoying the segue here yeah i just talked about it pretty cool huh And look here, we even have Lime rental scooters that feature front suspension. Wahoo! And those are battery packs with headlights. Look at these Lime scooters here. Does it make you want to have a gin and tonic with a squeeze of lime in it? Look at that. And there's Meg on our six-year-old Segway. Still works great. Good job, Ninebot. You made a good one. Wahoo! This is where we're riding the Sammamish River Trail. Look at that snake, how they move. That's fascinating. Uh, I wouldn't touch him. He's, he's going across. I know, but he's going to go into the river and drown. They can't swim? No. Come on, baby. I think that's a gardener snake. It is. I'm not scared of him. It's okay. He's scared of me. Oh, sorry, buddy. Come here. He thinks you're trying to eat him. I don't want to eat you. I don't want to eat you. Okay. Look, he coiled up because he's afraid. He's trying to smell you. Okay, love bug. Okay. Cool. Come here, baby. Meg likes saving insects from the. Oh, look. He... Oh, sorry, buddy. He, were ha he was hanging on to yeah. me. I was trying to show you, and then he suddenly changed position. But he would have felt fallen. If I let him go across, he would have fallen into the water. That's Meg right there. This is our solar system. This is a folding 30 watt monocrystalline solar array. And we have filtered sunlight coming through the forest fire smoke from up there. And what it's doing is it's facilitating electrons from photons here in the PN junction. The electrons strike the panels or these panels here. And when the electron forms, these silver wires on the surface or these tiny wires here collect the electrons and push it through the circuit. Now in this example, the MPPT controller is located inside this zippable pouch. And what we have it doing is through a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 USB-A port there, the red one, we have it taking USB-A power at 2.1 amps. And the red light here means that we're getting solar energy and it's shoving it into this charging brick. And the charging brick's six watt solar array is shoving power into the brick. So what we're doing is we're capturing more sunlight. Now I've taken the USB-C here and ran it through this cable here into my phone. So I'm charging my phone while shooting this video. And Meg's drinking water and we're taking a break here. It's a beautiful day. It does a body good. Stupid water was taken, so I bought some smart water. It was on sale. And we're here in Woodenville at this large park here like this. It's got this nifty 
1986 trellis assembly in a public bathroom, right? Meg agrees that this is a stunning scape to look upon. I'm going to move so that the bicyclists can get past. Check out this windmill right here. Meg and I are at the Kleist Mansion. Look at the size of this place. And it belongs to King County. Bling bang. Someone had some funding to build this joint. As I was doing that, the tire like, it just got on a weird dip in the sidewalk. Not exactly a vehicle you see elsewhere. That's Meg, the Segway enthusiast. Meg was telling me she's done stuff on the Segway today. Like we were just off-roading a little bit that she's never done in the whole time that we've owned it. But now that we have a new rideable, it became Meg's Segway. Well, it's our Segway. We both get to have fun on it. Wahoo!